Discussion. Anything? Any questions? So this is not an annual report. No. And our first annual report will be December 2020. So a year and a half since we've been established. Right. We did. We did give them a pretty substantial report when we got our goals. Okay. The only question I might have is whether you want to emphasize that in that paragraph to say that our next annual. Report Report will be submitted December 2020. I'll say that. Yeah, sure. Good. As I went through this, I wasn't sure if this was mm -hmm. considered an annual report and that the next one would be in December. No, <coughs> no it's just saying um, yeah. it's on our agenda as annual report, but it's actually budget request yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, no, I went back and forth with Laura a little bit on that as to whether we should have a full fledged annual report right now, but since we can't report that much, and we we already have reported recently, okay. um, so, but we could add that sentence, definitely, just to confirm. I am, I think this looks pretty good, um, I'm, on, I'm largely on board with it, uh, under capital budget, but first item, current capital requests, um, I'm just a little confused about what the main thrust of what we're asking or suggesting there is. Um, because it seems like we're saying we support current capital requests to the extent that they are most energy efficient infrastructure and vehicles and represent steps to avoid it or reducing the use of fossil fuel infrastructure and increasing the use of renewable energy. Are we trying to really say that we are urging you not to approve things that don't advance sustainability and we're just sort of masking that? Yeah. Is that the, just, just a, a, little, a little confusing about the phrasing there. I think that is. I okay. think that is. I mean, we, we went through a process of talking about whether or not we wanted to put together a climate impact yeah, exactly. statement. Yeah, exactly. So in lieu of doing that, we're, we're basically saying emphasizing that this is okay. that there are a bunch of things out there that they're requesting that could conceivably commit us to yeah. using fossil fuels for the next 30 years. Um, I'm just worried that it's a little vague, and that that would be read and kind of glossed over. Or like, there's, there's not a concrete asking there. You know, if we just added in a word or two yeah, and said that we, can do to make that we support a process or we support departments to consider in their in making their current capital request, something that is more of a... We urge departments to <coughs> consider the emissions impact of all And then, and then we support current capital requests. Okay. Does that consider the admission? Does that sound right? I guess, yeah. uh, what, is, what does it mean to say that we support current capital requests? Does well, they were already coming in. So departments are already right. forming so their budgets. These are the types of things that they're asking for. That's roofing, paving. You know. I was trying to say that the CAC supports those requests that are the most energy efficient. And, and eliminating fossil fuel use. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I guess we're not specifically saying. I think I don't know what how to say, but it sounds like what we want to protect the town from doing is investing in something exactly that locks us to fossil fuels or yeah. misses an opportunity. Yes. Um, for example, the classic: if you're regrouping at the insulation. Opportunities yes. that come that have large impacts. Yeah. That's what we are trying to avoid. <laughs> you know, the issue is that it's, we feel like it's a little premature and too late in the process to do that now. I'm wondering if there could be a second paragraph that says, moving forward, we would request, we would um, urge, uh, and we will work with 
committee of the council. It's all councillors. too narrow-minded, like, hey, everyone in the town has to be like us, or think in this way, and is there a broader, at the risk of diluting it, is there a way to, like, for climate action and climate justice, like, is there just a phrase in there that gives it a slightly broader, mm. where are you looking? At the last paragraph, um, the job description, it, it, and I'm fine that people think that I'm just making it too broad. Sustainability and climate action be Descriptions. That's what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah. Because why? Why shouldn't? Um, there's so many. There's other things that I think should be integrated into those job descriptions. I think it's reasonable. I see what you're so, but your concern is mostly that we should add climate justice. What if we just said sustainability and climate justice? Or climate action and climate justice, because. Uh, That's right. I'm asking if people think it's worthwhile to broaden it to, to be more inclusive to, to the egalitarian aspect of this, yeah. not just the redemption of the Yeah. I would support what you're replacing the word action with justice. Yeah, me too. Okay. All right, let's do that. Suggesting there perhaps be another heading, because it, it kind of looks like it's under operating budget. Yeah. Right now. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. It would be. It would be. Those are all operating budget. Okay, then it should have a number two because it's different. Yes. Oh, so okay. no there is the two. Well, you have the a one. The second paragraph would be two, and the third paragraph would be three. Okay. Three okay. different things. Okay. That's good. They were before, but, but uh, we were trying to. They moved around. Okay. Yes, yes thank yes. you. Okay, is that good? So if we. Um, I there seems to be urgency for getting this thing out. Maybe we could vote to to send it with the amendments that we, and if you trust us to put those amendments in, <laughs> um, because the town manager was really saying we need to get our request to him quickly. Uh, Will it go through Laura? Yeah. Yeah. And if, I mean, if, if, if you made the amendments and she. Can you just highlight for her the changes we made so that yeah. she yes. is aware? We didn't do anything radical, did we? No, no. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second his motion. <clears throat> okay, all in favor? Sending this out? Okay. Unanimous well, with the absentees. All right. So now um, we're on to the MVP process. It sounds like maybe I'll give you 15 minutes and okay. we'll um, see where we are. Yeah, like <laughs> so um, so um, unfortunately, 
we had submitted an RFP um, to try to find a consultant, and we got zero responses. Oh, oh that's zero. interesting. It's not surprising, though. Wow. And actually, in some ways, it's good. So I'll give you the, um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Get real. Um, so, um, so it's, it, I mean, it sounds horrible, but actually in the end, it, it's probably better that it happened this way because it may give us more time. So what happened was the, the problem is the timeline. I reached out to our consultant, Linnean, um, who we worked with. Once the time was up, I was able to call them. And I also reached out to the MVP program and spoke to the program manager, Kara Runston. And Linnean was great. He said, I was wanting to call you this afternoon. He said, I just want you to know it killed us not to apply. This is why. He said they literally had at least six different engineering firms contact them wanting to bid, you know, to submit something either in partnership with them. And um, everyone for hours. For hours. Oh. But everybody said that the timeline was just so tight. Um, so in any case, they, one other firm actually even commented and said they didn't apply because they thought we had a specific firm in mind because the timeline was too tight. But the mm -hmm. time constraint is all about the, the grant. It has nothing to do with yeah. us. Obviously, we'd give it plenty of time if we could. So um, that being said, I um, called the MVP program and I spoke with Kara. And she was great, and I and she said, look, I, she said, you all, she said, I absolutely recognize that you all did your best. She said, you were clearly cognizant of the short time frame. The, she said, the speed at with which we got the RFP out, and we had responses, you know, that we were clearly cognizant of that constraint. She said, um, typically they do not grant extensions. Um, she said, what I need to do is to we work the scope that will actually put some of this into the next fiscal year, but I have to put the majority of the funding to be utilized this year, this fiscal year, because what happens is any funding that we don't use in this fiscal year disappears. It's not like the state can, because I said, why can't we just put our, could we just put our application on hold for the next cycle? And she said, no. The money they have is the money they have for this fiscal year, and if it doesn't get used, it disappears. Think of it like your um, your tax benefits. You know, with you know, like if you don't if you don't use your, your well, if you don't well your um, your your tax credit. So like if you were if you were signing up to get you know um, reimbursements for your tax credit, you don't get that. Like if you don't use it up by June thirtieth, it's gone. Same thing. So if we don't use some of that money, what happens is any money we need to use in the next year is then going to be taken out of their next round of funding. So they're going to have that much less funding because we already secured some for our project. So, um, so that being said, she said she thought we had a good case. They recognized the timeline was incredibly tight and the fact that we had zero responses when clearly there is interest out there, mm -hmm. um, is justification for it. She can't guarantee it, but it's. I think she's going to rally for us. So, um, so that's good news. Can um, you clarify what she's rallying for? For us, for to get the extension. Okay. But with, so with spending the bulk. The spending, but we spend the bulk of yeah. it as much as we can in this fiscal year. So I think the way that, um, the really the way that I see. I mean, writing is going to be the thing that we really need the, some of the most input from the, the consultant. So I think the only way we can really do this is to do all of the community engagement plus working with the consultant in prior, prioritizing our sort of list so that we pretty much almost have a punch list that, that they can then do the writing for within this first period, this phase one, which means June 30th. But is, so, aren't the engineering consultants that they would hire going to be a big part of the the cost? That's going to be well. That's going to be part of the cost. We only we have a hundred thousand dollar budget, so it's not like we can we're going to be spending fifty thousand on engineering. We can't. We don't. I mean, there's not going to be that. We also have interpretation that we have as part of the funding. Um, you know, there's other 
money is already allocated in different pockets, if you will. Right, so, but the engineering isn't actually a, a pocket. That's the things that have to be done that right. will be that are understood. And I think we have to limit ourselves. We can't. So, for one thing, even if we have a full year, we don't. We're not going to be able to identify all the things we can do. What's probably the most important thing is to maybe identify a couple of things you want to move forward with, CCA being a great example. Something, a couple of, maybe a couple, one or two primary things in each category to sort of get started, but defining the process moving forward. Like having a plan that outlines this is what we're starting with and then moving forward and having the process with which to do that for like the next round, like how often are you going to assess, how are you going to assess, um, what are you going to include, you know, just ways to sort of engage. All those things should kind of be spelled out so that it's kind of a blueprint for doing what we need to do and then moving forward as well. That's, I don't, that was also, you know, from input from Jim as well because, um, from Linnaean Solutions, um, because again, we can't, even in the best of circumstances, unless we were going to take five years to work on a plan, you're not going to include everything. So no. we're going to, the, the best thing is to sort of identify those things that sort of are like, what are top priorities that you can start with to get started and sort of think of it that, think of it that way. And I think once we get a, a consultant on board, they'll help flush this thinking through. This is a very, I'm giving it a very broad brush approach right now, but I think they'll, when you get a consultant, they'll be able to help you sort of hone this in more. So let's just, you know, open this for discussion. The people, reactions, yeah. I guess I, um, um, I, you know, I have a kind of negative <laughs> reaction to even having a consultant write our plan for us. Uh, because I feel like we're capable of doing that ourselves and we know more about what we want to have done. I'm wondering if we could somehow orchestrate it so that we get a draft from the consultant and then we finish it um, in the next fiscal year because I think we're perfectly capable of writing the plan within this committee. Um, and we would feel a lot more ownership if we did it ourselves. Um, I guess I feel like it would be nice not to have to go back and update it repeatedly because it's such a time suck, you know. And I think after it's done, we'll probably, I don't know whether anyone will ever refer to it again, but <laughs> um, I remember when we first started, we were like, I hope we're not going to spend the whole first year working on a climate action plan. Um, well, here we are. Um, so that's part of the reason why we're consulting to it. But um, I guess I feel like um, I don't want us to to cut corners. I think we just we need to do it the best way we can. Um, that's all I have to say right at the moment. Jesse. I've looked at all the other climate action plans. You know, I very much you guys have been, and thank you for organizing that in an easy, through clicking way, including Amherst Climate Action Plan. And, and I have to say, I was a little discouraged at just the, the sort of visual, just, I tried to picture myself as a someone who lives in this town or in this community what would they do with this 70 pages or 90 pages or 40 pages of just like it's a wall of charts and words and maps and this is my profession understanding these things and I'm still like really? Like get to it. Like, like Springfield's was the one where at least Springfield's it had a couple of bigger words that felt meaningful to me. Mm. So I would ask the question and this is great that we have this opportunity of what do what is the point of this plan? What do we want this plan to do? And for me, it's to inspire action and to make action happen. Um, but I can picture this thing being <coughs> 10 pages long. And, and, and the bigger documents are like the greenhouse gas emissions. 
for 2020 or 2021, whenever that happens next. Like those, and those are things that are, we need support doing, but the kind of coming up with the words and the language and the goals and the vision, I felt lacking to me in all these plans. And I, I, I don't, I just couldn't, I wasn't connecting to it. And I was having a hard time imagining all the people. So I think, again, the question I would ask us is, and our whole community is, what do we want this plan to do? to the vision and the motivation, um, I think it's important to also um, use a consultant um, to do some of the heavy lifting on grounding this in reality uh, in terms of um, do we have goals? Don't make me quote them. <laughs> Twenty-five by twenty-five. The and, and more the better. <laughs> Quicker the better. Um, and um, um, getting some analytics together to, to um, understand and be transparent with everybody of what that means, with a lot of caveats and projections of the future and uncertainties and so forth. But nonetheless, um, inform people whether this is is this like a. a or is this like mm -hmm. a major, major commitment? Is this mm -hmm. new? How, to what extent is this doable? What are we asking people in, in some real terms? What's the, what's, what, what's the town yeah. look like yeah, differently? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think some, uh, again, I wouldn't spend as much time on writing 70 pages as I would in, in, in using some of that expertise on some of the, digging up some of the, uh, do, digging up some of the data and the analytics and doing and performing some of the analytics that would be um, really helpful to see ground truth where we're at. And that, that I, I do seem, see a bit more lacking in some of the other climate action. Um, it's funny, the Springfield plan, I feel like I can improve it drastically by deleting the first 42 pages of it. <laughs> That's what it starts by saying, changing the way we get around, and starts actually talking about what it's going to do. But there's 42 pages of just process stuff before it gets to that. You know? So let's not do that with you. One right. Mm. So, well, yeah. one thing I have to say is this is also a document that will get us funding to do these projects. Right. So unless you yeah. have yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. who's yeah. going to pay and for okay. all of this? Okay, so that's one audience. audience. Exactly. That's, that's a good question. Yeah, exactly. mm. I, I hope that the consultants reviewing the RFP didn't get the impression that they needed to create a blueprint that will get us all the way to exactly. 2050. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think, like think so. I hope not. I hope, I hope what, what I would like to see the plan is outline that greater need, but put a lot more detail. Here's what we can do initially. It's grounded into some analysis as to what's the lower, lower hanging fruit. And here's three or four programs that we can manage to do for the next year or two. And here's three or four more that we'd like to do in the next time frame. And, and then the report would get revised on a yearly basis as we march through progress on those and take on bigger tasks as, they, as we can. I guess I feel like if we have a goal of 25% by 2025, that's very soon. Yes. Um, and that I would at least like to, to be able to illustrate how we could do that mm -hmm. um, and, and quantify it. And, and, um, and which 50 TCA, percent by 30. We're hoping the TCA will be a part of that, you know? Right. Um, right. And so if we could, like, attach emissions reductions to different plans right. that we're putting out there, uh, you know, maybe there are five or six things that we want to do between exactly. now and then, and this is, this is what we want to do, and this is how it can bring down our Missions, so, yeah. Darcy, that's a really good point, and maybe that's how the scope can get revised for the RFP, is that the target isn't creating the process for the whole thing, but maybe creating the process to, to work towards that first um, 2030 goal, which is the 50%, like the, the 25 by 2025 and the 50% by 2030. 
maybe yeah. you could I mean, be I could, that I, could start I could definitely there. see that because that because is, who knows after that? Yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. actually you know get, sending out the message. We are actually going to do something here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. ambitious goal that's way off, or a less ambitious so, goal that's sooner. I'm not sure which is more daunting. Yeah, still <laughs> the earlier one. I think that having. Um, I really do want help from someone who can do this to work backwards from 50% from 2030 and say, you know, okay, where can we get this? You know, given the technology we already know we have and the, you know, at, at, at the, you know, not most possible expensive way of doing it, um, and what do we have to put in process to go beyond 2030. I, I don't want to just have nothing, right. you know, big yeah. blank, but, you know, here's, in order for you to, you know, start the sequestration measurement, you know, that may not happen in the next 10 years, but it, you know, you have to do these things in order to be ready for it to happen by 2035. That might not be the right example, but... Is that but it sounds possible? like yeah, like what it sounds like. It, it could maybe be a combination of the things where you say you're looking for expertise to come in and assist with identifying what those things are to meet the 20, 25, 2030 goals with with um, identification of those other you know, processes to get us to the 2050 goal. So that it doesn't just end with these are our 2030, 20, you know, 2030, 50% goals. It sort of has some specific things sort of targeted, but then projects other things to do moving forward. And these are the things you're going to have to look to or ways in which to do yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's, it's our job to look and say, um, okay, these things, the technology, Technology isn't cheap enough. We actually can't do this until it comes down without state funding. So we're going to work on state funding for blank. Is that something we can also expect from a consultant? I think you have that conversation with the consultant. Right. That's partly that's, what you do. You work out. Work down. You know. Okay. We don't have that state support yet, so we're saying, okay, we're we're going to work on that. Hope to get that by 2025 or whatever. You know. So we've honed a little bit um, the the scope, just in terms of the focus being on, you know, what, what you know the next ten years. But we're thinking like you know asking questions like, what kind of emissions reductions can we expect from CCA? What kind of emissions reductions can we expect from buildings, etc. And in, in building on that, what are what are the at a high level, obviously, but you know, what are the main challenges and barriers for getting those, and what could be actionable items that we can start early to penetrate through those barriers, be it state funding, exactly. or outreach, um, or um, financing through a CCA type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and also something that can be used to raise additional funds because it shows, hey, CCA can get it to 25 percent, to 20 percent by 2030, but only if it triples the budget that it has to actually procure, right? And that that's a really big, strong tool to make this case politically. Um, and I think it can be, you know, the ability to put out there to different audiences in a way that's more politically activated. Well, about, right? what you said, Jesse, really did resonate with me, and. And also, Darcy, we can write those 10 pages. We should be the ones to write those 10 pages. And the consultant's writing should be the appendices. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, you know, or, or they also, I can picture a consultant helping us organize our thinking and making, guiding us through that to some mm -hmm. degree. Write it in the 
time span of our bi-weekly meetings. No. Yeah. So yeah. it will yeah. increase our homework. Right. And, and I don't think we're done that as writing yes. is yeah. at all desirable. That sounds like that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think we, we, we have the skills to do it. I think there will be a, a, a we have the time. period of time. To make to, yeah. Right. So well, we can we, divide up the sectors. We can have a retreat. <laughs> Spend all day working on it. Well, you're going to have your... I mean, you have a lot of community engagement, too, because you're talking about yeah. you have an environmental justice component to this, which has pretty much clearly stated that you're going to be going out and sort of working with the community as well. So these consultants will also help with working with the community on identifying, you know, sort of helping to sort of parcel out what are the community needs that are out there, the, you know, that sort of speak to equity. Um, and depending on the consultants we get, there are some that are going to be more skilled at that than others. Um, and then, um, you know, and then sort of, in, you know, incorporating that into the plan. So you're going to need time for the community engagement piece, too, because there's a whole lot of meetings that are included in that RFP. Well, <laughs> so. that's really important to, to point out explicitly, Stephanie, because if, if that is indeed the type of profile that we're looking for, it sounds like our dream person is someone that can do detailed technical sector specific analysis of how much emissions reductions we can expect from certain activities, and also is an amazing community <coughs> facilitator that has the skills to set up a community meeting in a public housing space or whatever. You know, like there's, we, there's all these things that we want. We have funding so. identified to engage a community member as cool. part of that uh, RFP. Uh, so if you guys read, it's uh, in the RFP. Yeah. I can send it again. I know everyone <laughs> probably didn't have time to read it, <laughs> but I'll. <laughs> But it's in the it's more in the budget. It, if you look at the budget, the budget really kind of lays it out. Yeah. Um, so check out the budget and um, and that lays out engaging a community member right. to do just that. Piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the model is the same. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. But they'll and hire that's, people to do the pieces team. they can't. The it's a team, team, right? Just and we're all the team. The team isn't yeah. them. It's us. us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's the team. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have such a cool community know, you can say, it. we did this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on the aspect I, I, of Jesse was... No, you go, go ahead. I okay. okay, this is a different thing. On, on the aspect of scope for the new RFP, which I think that's what you were saying we would do, there were some questions submitted that were answered on the town website, and several questions asked about the need for redoing the greenhouse gas inventory. And the answers that were posted sort of said, well, maybe if it's necessary. So I, well, I wondered if some of the consultants might have thought that that was adding to the already unreasonable task, scope and time frame. So I guess my question is, do we want to try to make it clear that the new greenhouse gas inventory is not part of, not expected? What was the it, only reason it came up, though, is because some of the questions were also about if we change assumptions. Like to well, Jesse's point a couple of meetings yeah. ago, there are assumptions in the inventory that so, yeah. and that's the thing. It's like, well, if you do start going down that road. I agree. You know, Dwayne was saying about benchmarking and really being able to analyze the impact of things we will perhaps need updated greenhouse gas numbers. Maybe we don't need a formal oh, yeah, inventory. We, yeah. Yeah. Well, the question was more about the trend analysis. So I went through, I actually went through it this afternoon and tried to hone in. It's big. It's a lot. But I went in and I found like the three or four cells that seemed like they were really swinging the needle mm -hmm. in a strangely obscured way. Like in the big one, I think the big one is the natural gas factors that they're using for like less than a percent of leakage, for example. But now, Yeah, and that's probably concerned. And, that, and, and, and they're like on the range of like the global warming potential of methane. It's 28 to 36. They're using 28. If it's 36, it, it's, a, it's swinging the needle. So there's a bunch of little things in there. And I just think, I think that ties in though to, I don't think it matters as much as I think it matters in the sense that like we need to do huge moves. Yeah, yeah. Right. We need to do huge moves. And if, mm -hmm. no matter what, and I think this ties really ties into this education piece of like this group first probably and then the whole town sort of like getting a common language around and a literacy around all this stuff, which is still really fuzzy I think for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so that could I don't know if that's part of our outreach effort potentially is just building that understanding 
Yeah, and again, it was more, the specific question had to do with redoing a trends analysis. So if, the, if they were changing assumptions, would they have to redo a trends analysis? Um, and that was sort of like, well, if you're changing assumptions that impact, you know, data, then you obviously do have to, mm. <laughs> you know, and, and that's, again, it depends on how deep we're going, how much, how much do we need this really? Yeah. In order to do the other things that we're trying to do? Maybe not. Right. Maybe not. I mean, are we going to check our emissions annually? Not annually. <laughs> not annually. You know, no, maybe, but well, that's but that's also another thing that you identify as part of your plan. How often do you go back and reassess your inventory? Like, do you update, you know, every other year, every five years? And again, these are all things because you, I mean, ultimately you're looking to have something to reference, right? right. So how do you how do you measure how do you measure your success? Mm -hmm. And and these are not they're it's it's such a it frustrates me because I always feel like it's it's so intangible, really. Yeah. These are really, these numbers. It's the estimates. It's one thing to get a, a methodology that's reasonably good, but you stick with, you, you're, good, you're right. pleased enough with that mm -hmm. uh, methodology that you're, you feel like you can stick with that methodology so you can, um, so you can track uh, yeah. over time and know that it's, that it's consistent or have means to recalibrate things if the methodology changes. So that maybe the greenhouse gas, maybe the inventory doesn't, there isn't a big focus on it. And maybe like after those things are done, then there's maybe a new, you know, um, a new inventory that's done or a deeper dive. So I want to come back to where we started, which was that we might be able to get more time. We hope so, because nobody can do what we need in the time frame. Um, and so we expect that will be a yes, and we have to pay out the majority of the money because what? It's lost? There is no money in after July 31st? We have, no, because what happens is the state has given us $100,000. June 000. 31st. Yeah, June. June 30th. <laughs> 30th. Um, the state has given us $100,000. If we spend $100,000 now, that's great. And that was the whole idea was like, get us to spend it all within this fiscal year. If we spend 30,000, then, and we say, well, and we're gonna use the 70,000 in the next fiscal year, that 70,000 comes out of their new budget. And the 70,000 from this year's budget is gone. So they've lost, the state has basically just lost the $70,000. So in order to give us an extension, they're making a promise that they will save out $10,000, $20,000, whatever it is. Well, more, yeah. I mean, I, I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe, I feel like it's pushing it a little bit, but I thought if we did 50-50, <laughs> then it would be hard for them to say, it's the majority because basically we're spending 50 now and 50 in the next cycle. I don't know that we can go beyond 50. Why? I'm a little, uh, we can, but they're, because they specifically said in order for this to get approved, they're asking us to spend the majority in this fiscal year. Yeah, no, but why can't, why do you think it'd be hard to spend, I mean, so the engineering companies told them that they couldn't do what would be required in the time frame, but they would have done a lot, and they could be paid for a lot, and so it might be 75% done, and 25% is held over. Oh, yeah, I mean, oh, if it's whatever is in the majority in the first, in this fiscal year is fine. That's, yeah, I mean, if you could do 60-40, that's great. I was thinking that in terms of 
the majority that we can ask into the next year. And that's going to come out of what we ask for. They're going to say, oh, well, we already gave you well, 30000 what, what I need to clarify, which I didn't ask and I need to, is actually does it mean that we can't apply? I mean, it won't affect any regional ask, and it won't even affect another. Actually, it probably won't, because the way she actually said it won't actually affect us. It did come up. Okay. It's not going to affect whether we ask for more funding for something different. Okay. It won't affect a regional request. All right. Now that we have to reissue, assuming we get the OK, reissue the RP, we now have even less time. Yeah. Right. Well, for this fiscal year, yeah, right, exactly. exactly. And now I feel like we've, I, and really, because it takes time. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, so my goal is to get this um, revised tomorrow mm -hmm. and get it to them um, tomorrow or Friday because if we, and I don't know how quickly, I mean, I'm going to beg Kara to as quickly as she can turn it around because if we want to put out another RFP, it has to get posted, I think it has to go in and be submitted on Wednesday in order to be um, advertised on Monday. <laughs> I know this is all, but this is how it works. So it's just, you know, it's all it's the timing. Weeks. And then it's two weeks. It has a minimum of two weeks to be advertised. And then we have to open the bids and then we have to go through an interview process. Mm -hmm. So again, and I'm like, the last one, it was super tight, and I'm scheduling it the same way this time. It's going to be super tight. So I need to turn this around as quickly as possible. It sounds like March 9th, or maybe the week of March 16th. March 16th is March the week 16th. I have okay. in my head. That's provided the state turns yeah, this around. Everything, everything goes perfectly March 16th, is what that means. Yes. Which means that there is March, April 16th, May, June, like three and a half months of work, basically. So we're gonna have so, so, we, so well, that, that, that's okay. We just need to think about it in we're, this chart. We're going to have to schedule and, and you know the outreach, that, you know, <laughs> and reserve space. Yeah, we'll do ahead we can, of time. There are things. Oh yeah, that's that's an easy part. Like that, we can do. That's not hard. Well, and I mean, we without them consulting with us about how many times we should meet, you know. Well, we already have it in the, but it's yeah. already in the, yeah. in the budget. Okay, yeah. It's budgeted. We basically have sixteen meetings, total. And the idea, part of that was, and I realized after when I revised the scope, um, when we had CCA, some of those meetings were meant to be for CCA, which is why there's so many. But now, um, because uh, the CCA got pulled out of the funding, we still were left with all those meetings. But that's not necessarily, mm -hmm. that's not a bad thing. Because, um, you know, you've been talking about doing sector work, and it makes sense to sort of break up and do teams. And that's one of the things the consultant that I spoke with, who we worked with before, talked about, like when we do community engagement, mm -hmm. doing teams, that's what the city of Medford is doing. So if you want to have an idea of the kind of thing, I, I mean, it's, it's I, I don't okay. know, in my mind, it's what we were doing from all the discussions we've had. It's certainly how I envisioned it, but city of Medford is kind of the model, if you want to take a look at that, to, um, for one of their recent efforts. That's kind of what we want to do. All right, so I want to kind of wrap up our discussion of this. Is there anything that hasn't been said that you want to make sure that goes into the RFP? So we can't pay them in advance for, for services to be rendered in the next no. fiscal year? Ask that too. And you used to be able to do that with that grant. Mm. They used to be able to, because I said, well, can't we just get all the funding up front and just have it and then pay them out? And she said, um, it used to be that you could do that, but they changed the rules and guidelines, and now you can't. So there must be a lot of other municipalities that have to, are dealing with the same problem. Well, not necessarily because everyone's doing different projects. They're not all doing a right. plan. Big, big you know, a lot of them, a lot yeah. of them are they're like construction projects. And they're <coughs> shovel ready. Right. Right. But they have to be shovel ready, and even that's tight. Yeah. No. Okay. So you have our feedback on. Yes, I have your our feedback. <coughs> on this. I will include those things yeah. into the revised scope. Okay. Sure. Great. Yeah, it's not, not fun. So right, thanks. Two, a few minutes before two o'clock on Monday with Stephanie and Anthony, we, they told me none had arrived in the mail, so we were watching the clock in the door yeah. just to see if something was coming. Hoping like we ran in, run in. Yeah. Wait, no, here it is. No, 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 no. Wow. <laughs> that was interesting. Hmm. Mm. Um, so the next item is to the, review the draft memo, which I think already went. So I don't know why we would call it a draft. Memo. I thought it was. Was the annual that, report? Wasn't that yours? No. 
I, we already did that. Yeah, we already did that. Oh. The draft memo from Laura to, I assume. The draft from, memo from Laura? From no, Laura to Paul. No, it was a draft memo. I, don't, I no, did I, not add that item, so I don't know who. It's probably just a duplicate then. Yeah, I did okay. send a, an item in that I would love to talk about if we have time, but not. we don't have to do it now. It was the, the uh, website, yeah. the outreach website. Okay, let's, um, let's wait on that. Skip. Um, okay, so I, I would like to, you know, give us a full 30 minutes to go through, um, I think, our, the idea is to go through another sector with a similar plan um, that sort of emerged from our, our conversation last time about electricity. And I would suggest that we do buildings this time and just dive in and, and you know, yes. what do you think? I did find that our sector plans are in the packet of the July 17th meeting because this mm. was confusing me that we were kind of reinventing the wheel when we had already had uh, True. gone through the sector plan. So, um, it's our July 13th. I think it's July 17th, but... Depends which July sector. They didn't all come in at the same time. Uh, so maybe it was the 19th. Uh, was the oh, July. Oh, that was the 19th, not 19th. Um, no. No, it was... I think it was July... It was 17th. Right here? Oh, there's right. We talked about sector plans over several meetings. Yes. That's true. That's but, but a bunch of them did come in at the beginning. So let's um, see how, what are, what's in here. Keep going. That was the HFC. Yeah. So those were the main questions that we were answering, that which are one? Oh. different from the ones that we're oh, answering right. now, no, which have to do more with timing. Someone drew a thing. Yeah. A a Evan drew, yes. drew a thing. <laughs> and that was that was uh, uh, yeah. building. I know what you're talking about now. And I'm uh, it was before the. Uh, that was before the retreat. The retreat, yeah. The it was definitely. Um, it wasn't there. I mean, I looked up seven seventeen. Why do you? What, you're missing the meeting. The end of July. Uh, maybe it was July thirty. No, because we did um, we did the retreat, right? The retreat was retreat probably was the, the beginning so of August, August. yes. Yeah. So maybe seven fifteen was the last one. You might not have had a meeting. I've got all the So you, you the one that says sector plans was only one thing? That was yeah, that, that was, was just but but um, yeah, I just got it from the, the mail from mail from Stephanie. Um, and it was it a packet. Was yours? Oh, well, that's all it was. Oh, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I've got a. I've got a there's, it's only two pages. <laughs> yeah, it's only two pages. Okay. Um, then, so then let's go to your. These, these guys, these sector plan draft. Right. Yes. 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 These. Can you, Where did you email that them? to so Stephanie? That is in a folder on my server. Can you um, just email that document or yeah. a couple of it? There so yeah, the question is just buildings. whether we want whether we want to use this, some of the information that we already put in there. Who did the buildings? I did, and um, I think Dwayne did too. different building ones. It didn't show up in a later meeting. I mean, we might have had it, we might have started it before, but maybe we didn't. I definitely saw the meeting. Jesse's going to email it. All right, I'm going to try emailing email. Who am I emailing this to you? Stephanie. 
Um, so I'm just going to read um, the, the outline that Laura created for us um, while we did the electricity. So starting with where are we now? You know, we have to start with data. Um, and so with buildings, what would we want for the where are we now? Um, probably we'd want information about energy efficiency work, upgrades that have been done. Yes. We have separate categories for municipal buildings and residential and commercial buildings. Yeah. Right? Right. Plus, apparently, we're covering all the colleges. So, <clears throat> what percentage of our town residents have had energy or efficiency retrofits and upgrades? And yes. I'm not just saying things that we want to know. If there's a report on mm -hmm. the previous Solar Rise Amherst uh, project, that's nice just solar. This is I know. Building. It would be nice to see how what kind of results that achieved. So we, oh, we have well, numbers. We know that. Yeah. yeah. We have the like numbers the, of ho houses. Number of houses. What, um, to the extent that there's information, what uh, percent of the houses are um, heated with different fuel sources? You know, um, oil, gas. That's in, that's in the emissions. Report. It is. It is, but it's, it's not hard. I it's think not it's, easy to get. Uh, it's, uh, but it's also, I think, I think based on statewide averages. Yeah. Um, which is. Um, it might be we weren't able to necessarily get it. Yeah. I well, think we, we're digging into we got bit. that from Energy Saves. Um, I think they had access to data on. I think there's census data also. type of heating. Well, you wouldn't know necessarily. You would know if they had gas or not. You wouldn't necessarily know if they were, what they were using for heat, I think. I can only send them one at a time. This is all the remote desktop. <laughs> so, um, yes. So how much energy efficiency work has been done um, and what's left, you know, the gap analysis, what's left to do, um, to, yeah, probably there's ways to get upgrades that require, um, permits. No, I don't think I got a permit for replacing my heating system. Should have. Should have. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was the same. Yeah, it, 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 was, was, it was a new <laughs> heat pump replacing should, an old heat pump. There should have been electrical yeah. electrical yeah. permit pulled for that. But whether we can get to the permit system. They didn't have to do control. any Your change. Should. Maybe they did. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we, so yeah. then we can get that. We made, That's good I mean, data. We have our... Our system isn't all that user friendly, but um, we can run reports, and I might be able to run reports. But it's only going to cover those where there were per permits. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if there wasn't a permit, we can't just get all the data on every household, but we can certainly probably get information. Well, like I mean, this went through Mass State. There must have been like done right. Say, like, just What's a, it for? A, a heat pump, or is it just an electric permit to do an upgrade on the uh, no, it would probably reference a heat pump. I would yeah, think. Okay. I, I think it'll. I think it would be that specific. But I can ask yeah. Tina. Do you search for heat pump as a keyword? Uh, I don't know if they can do that. Oh, it may not do that. It'll. I mean, they can look at the electrical permits that were issued over X number of times. So, I mean, we know we're going to need this information. Can't we go to the colleges now and say we want this information? <laughs> You know, why do we have to wait on the this? Colleges for what information? If we're going to be, we're doing this for the entire town, right? 
our climate plan includes the institutions, correct? Yeah, but we're not going to do, they already have yeah. their work that they're doing, so we just basically want to tap into what they've got. Like oh. not, we're not going to do the work for them. Oh. Yeah. We'll just take their, whatever we'll they've finished. Are they whatever they, yeah, they'll, we'll ask them for specific information and they'll supply Energy it. efficiency of each building? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not the stage yet that it's building by building by building. We're doing a massive amount of that sort of thing. Yeah, so then. What we're talking about for MVP, but on steroids. <laughs> but the idea of, of knowing the. Um, Heating load. Okay. Yeah, that's what we need. That's, I mean, that's know, what we um, really need. I mean, build, um, I mean, if we're talking about specifically residential, do you know if it would be? And actually, we looked at we looked at this on the um, uh, assessment data um, of whether you can get like square footage of the homes. I mean, can, oh, yeah. you can. Well, oh, sure you can. That, yeah, that's sure in that's the, there. you know. But but you don't know what's heated space. Well, that was right? the issue. Of whether they had square, it wasn't clear, uh, always clear whether it was uh, square feet of the, of the right. footprint or how many stories or whether it was square foot of the whole parcel. So I think that that gives us an idea of the kind of information we, we want. And also on the commercial buildings. All of yeah. these, yeah. in yeah. three yeah. segments. we measure the energy efficiency? Yeah. 
uh, and basically this model that I'm developing that needs some uh, calibration um, is, uh, okay, if we want uh, to get 80% reduction by year X, um, and we're here, and we, what's that pathway look like? We're not, um, the model doesn't um, model um, how well it'll penetrate. You give it how much you want it to penetrate, and then it'll spit out, okay, this is um, how, how um, what that looks like in terms of greenhouse gas reductions, what it mean, looks like in terms of uh, additional electrical use because of their heat pumps um, uh, for, the, for the town. Municipality can be a region generally. Um, and uh, greenhouse gas emissions, it allows you to compare and suggest that, you know, some percentage of that penetration is going to be air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps, or, or wood energy, modern wood energy. Um, and you can choose, it's, it's for mm -hmm. policymakers to use and say, okay, what does it look like? And also, estimates is where I need more data, more uh, in, better uh, review of the inputs of if we assume capital costs of those things, Great. and operating costs of those things, what Thank does it you. mean in terms of investment money? What does it mean in terms of reductions in operating? Of, uh, It'd be great to get a little demonstration of that. That is my purpose. It's not quite ready for prime time, but I'm happy to show it. When it is. You. Did you come up with um, ideas about how to make that happen? How to accelerate the No, that's not true. <laughs> uh, no, not. It's <laughs> Well, I think that yeah, I did the easy part. That begs the question of why gather all this data? Yeah. Right? Yes. How, how is it going to help? That's exactly data? right. Yeah. 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 You scroll to the next page. Yep. I think I did the 30 second version of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. So I got 9,000 houses in town. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And with. Okay. Oh, that's the. Uh, Fifty thousand for retrofitting. That seems high, but well, the, what are we talking? I'm hearing numbers like twenty-five, fifty, and one hundred percent reductions. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, actually, not that's real. reductions. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's, if you have solar, that's what I'm that. That's all sectors. Oh, oh, I see. Or no, 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 sorry. The, 20, the numbers like twenty-five. As, that's including if you put solar on to offset. And how much does it cost to put solar Yeah, that's 20000 <laughs> Yeah. So it seems like we need to add the element of um, how we're getting the community to move on this, which, um, you know, in Cambridge, they, they've had a succession of... of Basically, legislation starting with easy stuff with the you know commercial landowners um, having to voluntarily disclose uh, what their energy use is. That's what that link is right there, Portland, Maine. They have an ordinance. Oh, cool. They have, they have a mayor. Yeah. They have someone that can just like make ordinances. Troy. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, his name Troy Moon. He doesn't necessarily. I'm sure he probably drafted an ordinance with people. But I know him, and mm -hmm. yeah, he's very active, and he has his own office, and he has staff, and he's right near the <laughs> Are we jealous? <laughs> no, they just prioritize it. But I mean, no, it's like the thing where they, they, you know, they like said this is like a priority. Yeah. And so, and Cambridge has done that. So we, we just need, we need an action plan about how this is going to happen, because it's not going to happen just naturally. You know, it's only going to happen if, if we push it forward. And if Cambridge and other communities have developed a plan, we can adopt that. Right. They, they have a phased in, you know, voluntary, then a bigger push, and then a, then a requirement. So and there are online tools for this. Um, I know we go wise is one W E G O W I S E. They work with um, businesses or um, municipalities that are tracking how much um, is 
is saved by this measure or that measure that they've taken so they can look easily and see the differences they've made. Right, and if we get our zero net energy stretch code passed in this legislative session, which, you know, it's now out there, thanks to our senator, that would help a lot. Mm. <laughs> when we do the community <laughs> outreach, a good question to ask uh, property owners is, sort of range of questions, what, what has kept you from doing energy efficiency upgrades? Is it, is it knowledge about the availability? Is it the funding that you need? those then would feed into what sort of solutions we need. Right, yeah, and that's the hardest piece, is residential, you know? That can be residential and commercial, asking commercial property owners the same question. Right, but right, I, yeah, I that's think you, you have less, works all about. less problems right. with, the, <laughs> with the few commercial owners than the many, many residential owners. Yeah, it's mostly residential. I, um, I'm not sure there's time to bring it up, but um, talk about buildings and when to bounce and how to in the Gazette a couple days ago, we were talking about major re renovation, major renovation, reconstruction of the Rolling Hills, I think it's called. Oh, really? Uh, town. I mean, it's, you know, gonna, it's starting to be planned. Rolling Green? Rolling Green, sorry. Yeah. Rolling Green. I was getting mixed up. Um, and it's like, um, you know, I, I live right by there, and it's like, you know, there are air conditioning units in every window at the oh, walls. Okay. And, I'm sure, you know, I don't know exactly what they have in plan, have in store for this renovation, but, you know, um, I'm not sure what leverage the town has or this committee has. Are they working with, you know, uh, what's it called? It used to be called HEP. No. Oh, the, um, yes, the, um, it used HAP. to be called HEP. Now it's uh, Wayfair. We have Wayfair. Wayfinders. Wayfinders. Oh, they're, uh, they do They're that. Was, they do know, exactly just, this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> How do we find that out? We have to make yeah. sure they're doing that. Yeah, Rudy is. I know. Retired. I read that article. I didn't see much about <laughs> no. efficiency. Yeah, as, yeah, as right. Goal. Yeah. No. Probably kind of cost some, but also increasing quality of living. In them. Yeah. That's a that's a great point. That yeah. That's something that there's going to be a lot of work being done. Yeah. To help to make sure that it's the right kind of work. Yeah. Well, that's in so. You know, the outreach similar to the stakeholder sessions we had, trying to go to these places and go and get these people involved. Yeah. You know, these property managers, um, you know, and, and it doesn't necessarily even have to be just the, the owners, but the property managers who are there and can make recommendations, like getting them on board to attend yeah. some of these sector meetings might mm -hmm. be a good way to help educate. Yeah. Um, the way here are property managers. Yeah, no, I, I, did, I don't think, I, I actually don't no, think they, they don't, do wrong No, they don't, they don't. They, they do too. They uh, do Butternut and Olympia yeah. Oaks. Yeah. Oh, I thought someone said they were involved. They should yeah. be. Yeah. yeah, so, well. They do consult, <laughs> even if they're not the manager. Okay, so there's one of those, like, low-hanging fruit. If we could just get there now and influence it without very much effort. It's so frustrating. How do we do it, you know? Well, we don't have a stretch code that requires it. Well, no, but they might do it anyway. Yeah, no. Well, if their contractors or their planners are not aware of state incentives, then one way would be to help them become aware of right. those. Yeah. For heat pumps. Yeah, so the heat pump program. And what I liked about the link that you shared with us was there's a site there and you can click on a thing like the heat yes. pump and then learn how that might be effective and whether it's appropriate for you. That was sort of geared for the homeowner, but um, there must be people in the state. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, MassSafe has a whole commercial. Right. Beacon, yeah. uh, Beacon and Communities from Boston owns. Oh, do owns it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Beacon. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to shut up. <laughs> I will try not to. Is that device on? It is. Um, <laughs> so <you> Beacon <laughs> has been, I think, kind of Boston Community Capital. They've been open 
into doing good work on some of their properties over the years. And there's people, I think there's people at BK and Boston Community Capital where a lot of this money is coming and funding these things. Is, that's a, that seems like a possibility. Right? <laughs> I don't know. I, no, seriously, I don't, I don't know. Um, because Beacon are the ones that are constructing the North Amherst huge development by Atkins uh, North. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's Beacon. Yeah, yeah. The North Village. Mm -hmm. um, For this Rolling Reed project, what's the first contact that they all have to make with the town in terms of renovations and construction? The, the, the planning board? Not the planning board. Well, well, it depends on what the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on, you know, the permits that they'll have to pull. So they'll have to come in and they, it's, it's never just one. There's not. Uh, like, right, right. It depends on what they're doing. And that may be already kind of late. To right. Sway their if it's plan. in the paper, it's probably already. Yeah. yeah. Already, oh, yeah. My guess is they've probably already talked to people. And yeah, I don't. So when people come here, you know, I'm trying to think of like you're saying, what's the opportunity here? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, it may be that now, what would be useful is to like have information that can go right to people who when they're coming to pull permits or they're going to, you know, that's contractors too come late. to the window. That's too late. They've already made a design. They've already made decisions at that point. How do we yeah. make that contact first? I wouldn't listen when the process question comes in in a way that we were talking about before that we wanted to really emphasize going forward but have a bike up in order to do that, right? So... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the outreach would be an opportunity to try to get that information out there. I mean, is there, I mean, can we, are we um, in a position to uh, maybe under Laura's signature to, on behalf of this committee, just reach out to Beacon Properties and say that we read, read this, we work for the town, we'd be happy to meet with you, we'd like to meet with you. Um, again, we'd have to sort of think about what is it we're going to pitch them, but is that done? Um, <laughs> like we could invite, I think the, the way that I could see doing that rather than, is okay. maybe inviting them to, you know, come to meet with us at a meet, you know, the next meeting, or I think those are the, sort of the more typical pathways of getting someone to come in to have a discussion like that. Invite them to share all the innovative sustainability efficiency measures they're doing. Yeah, I don't, exactly. I mean, exactly. honestly, exactly. Let them know I that mean, the town has these commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, yeah. We'd love to have you as yeah. part of that. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, yes, yeah, sir. so, but that's what I'm saying. You invite them yeah. okay. to, yeah. Yeah. you know, okay. come to a meeting mm -hmm. to have, you know, we have these, I these ideas and things that we'd like to share with you. And learn from them. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yes. They've got yeah. some smart ideas that right. we could yeah. apply to other yeah. sites. If we can't still pee in them, I guess we'll invite them. <laughs> <laughs> for us, yeah. learning from them. Yeah, so shall we right do that? Yeah. 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 I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. How do we do it? Can you do it, Stephanie, or, or is it like a staff thing that you could do? Uh, well, or, um, I should probably, I think it would be better coming from Laura as chair, and I could just, I'll coordinate with Laura. And I also, I do want to run it upstairs yeah, yeah. first yeah, before right. I get myself in trouble. Okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, but, but Laura can, I mean, again, this is one of those things where, you know, Laura maybe do Laura decides that. is the chair of the committee and you all decide that you want to do that and I, you know, I'll just check. Should we, I, if we can do it in a way that won't offend, I'll, you know. They, they probably have a sustainability director. You would hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up, Dwayne. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're getting a little weedy. Um, so let, let's just go through some of the things that, that are on Laura's question. So um, we, we did a lot on where are we now, and I've been kind of writing down, we, we've jumped around here, but where do we need to go um, so that that comes to, you know, what is going to be needed in the future, what, what growth projections are there for um, 
more buildings, different buildings, big changes to buildings like you know, Rolling Green being re renovated. Um, and <coughs> um, is there anything else about where we need to go with buildings? Well, I think for all of these in general, I think we need, one of the things I noticed from our outreach efforts was that I had, there was a specific question that I kept trying to pitch, and it was in our thing, it was like, describe this vision. Here's what we're proposing. Describe what this looks like. And it drew a blank from everyone. And I think in part of this, where do we need to go, some work, and I think it's work with the community, is like to, as a community, articulate what this world looks like. Yeah. And I think, and because marching down the path towards something, we, and because I think what it looks like numerically, the numbers we're talking about culturally and societally and politically and economically, what that looks like is crazy pants for most people. And so, starting to come up with some of that language and those words of what a world looks like that is 50% uh, reductions, 100% reductions, 10% reductions, like really simple narrative prose is it. And, and I'm even, someone who's been like obsessing over this for probably 25 years, I still don't know I can, if I can describe what that world yeah. looks like. But, but we can walk into buildings that look like what buildings need to look like. We can show, we can do, you know, zero energy home open houses and, you know. But 80% of the homes that are going to be in their 2050 time frame are already built or something. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, um, I mean, to some extent, I'm not sure if, I mean, one vision is that it doesn't look that different. Um, we all drive around our same old cars, except they're all electric. Um, we got PV arrays out in the Hadley Farm Fields or somewhere, or offshore wind coming in, solar on all the roofs. We're already seeing a lot of solar on roofs. Um, that's not that much different. Uh, and, you know, you don't see uh, uh, insulation in your attic. Once it's there, you have to do that, but your life doesn't change so much. You got heat pumps. But we, you know, I don't know. could talk okay. about it yeah. is disruptive while it's happening, and then here's what your bill looks like. <laughs> you can say your kid is not going to have asthma. Better indoor air quality, more comfortable spaces, more resilient spaces can stay warmer longer when the heat goes off. One way to do that would be to find a community that's gotten a lot of I made a lot of progress in that respect and then highlight that community as an example of how it can be done. That to me at least that's that's not the impediment to action. It's more the practical things like getting around to it or having the money to invest in a heat pump and being convinced that I should I should do that. Right, so, or just being organized enough to to uh, go to the credit union to get your loan. Right. To, you know, like I'm in the process of doing that right now and I've been putting it off for about four yeah, months and because there, it's like there's a lot of pieces to it. the credit union comes to you. <laughs> well, that's right. So, so making uh, tours of existing homes that have been extensively upgraded for energy efficiency, having the, that kind of a tour being readily available to people, not just once a year on a, on one weekend, but Times. And we really want to have it be a home that didn't cost a gazillion dollars. That's right. That's right. It's, it's not you a know? magazine. Yeah. No, yeah. Right. It would be really nice to have, you know, to have have an example of a ranch style house, an example of a, you know, mm -hmm. mega mansion or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, examples of different types of houses. And it could be different degrees of extensiveness. It could be whole, whole yes. retrofits as well as here's we have the attic insulation added. Oh. Right, and there so, there are such things. There are tours. Of, I mean, there are tours, but those are the ones I think well, once or twice a year. And sometimes the tours, there's one house here, there's one in Northampton, right. like Greenfield. And yeah. I've always wanted to go on one. Nessie does that. that. And, and as someone who's dedicated to this and cares about it, you haven't gone on the tour. So, right. <laughs> right. 
Oh, yeah. I did yeah. one tour. I did yeah. do one yeah. business one. Yeah, no, I did yeah, for like 10 years ago. Kind of, your comment about the impediment being like, last time it was bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, and then it gets back to the like, it's just not a choice anymore. If you're going in for a building permit, <laughs> you have, like, this is now zoning and building code issues. Exactly. Yes. Yes, yes. Right, right. Well, the, the community outreach that I've always imagined was door to door. And, you know, like the brush salesman. You know, let me open the suitcase and, you know, here's what it looks like to, you know, have, in, you know, internal storm windows. Here's what, yeah. Or the online outreach that I shared with everybody, you know, to, to, to you know, get everybody's buy-in to join the big campaign for bringing down emissions in town, you know, having having a competition or, you know, saying we have a goal of 50% country, you know, uh, participation among the whole community and they can do all these different things, one of which is retrofitting their house. Yeah, you know those, uh, those fundraising thermometers? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. One that goes down. Yeah, exactly. It's a great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. The smoke stackers. <laughs> so this is one of the things that Energy Save is, is doing, using that um, tool that that isn't quite ready for, um, it, it's, it's, it's in development still. Um, but we're working with those people who also uh, develop the Cooler Communities program. You can look up coolercommunities.org. And that's um, having a community-wide, you know, schools, waste management, you know, at, at all the different sectors involved. And the kids come, they do they, they projects that their parents want to come and see, you know, the results of it. Um, and we hit them with a pledge form, you know, or this online thing that they they do on their phones while they're going through. Um, I like the idea of bringing in the schools and, and getting the kids to help convince their parents. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned sort of totally revamping the school, not totally, but, but having a major educational campaign within the schools. Yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, maybe a little bit beyond our capacity, but working with the schools. That, yeah. That would be a vision. Ask kids to go home and examine every aspect of their own house with the help of give, their Give them parents. an infrared to test their <laughs> insulation. Oh, so when, when so kids went to recycling training, they, they were harassing us constantly. That's, yeah. that's how you change yeah. things. It's definitely a math, it, uh, math Absolutely. Problem. Kids drive change. I, you know, it's, um, it's about also building partnerships with folks in town. So for instance, you know, even finding a teacher at the schools who's willing to do this because we've been here before in terms of trying to engage with the schools on curriculum and it's not easy. You have to do it like two years ahead of time. Yeah, well that's what I'm saying. You have to build relationships. So if you start cultivating relationships and getting people involved and maybe in either, even not specifically on the curriculum piece, but just in maybe part of the general community engagement piece, yeah. just to get them to, to come and be part and participate so that they get excited about what's happening and they want to bring it back. Right. Like almost to let them feed the idea of creating the curriculum, you know? And well, so I think definitely. some probably do it too, I'm sure. I mean, these days there are teachers that are definitely, they're incorporating stuff about climate change in the curriculum. It's just not necessarily specifically about the community they live in, ironically. Yeah. There, there also other, there's also community-based organizations that have capacity to do a lot of this kind of work. We don't have to, we don't have to develop all of that outreach and organizing capacity from scratch or even in a house. Yeah. So I wonder how we can, how are we leveraging those types of things? You know, thinking about schools, there's an active Sunrise chapter in Everest, and yeah. at, at the Everest School, they're, they're there, they have events, they have stuff, they have, and it's, it's a built-in space that the town can potentially plug information about opportunities to make individual lifestyle decisions, homeowner decisions, et cetera, into. Um, that's just one idea off the top of my head. There's other ideas that we mm -hmm. right. We're already yeah. grabbing them for things like yeah. the, you know, resident um, capital requests to yeah. kids yeah. from Sunrise. Yeah. 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 And if we have ideas about um, additions to the curriculum, you know, the MTA has an annual conference and it's not unusual for them to 
to um, pass new climate-related curriculum every year because there's some activists that are pushing it. And so that could be something that could be added to the Massachusetts curriculum statewide. Um, and okay. we have a lot of those activists right around here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that <laughs> kind of outreach. Those those conversations should start now. The um, school committee does want to work with us. Can we just like in, offer an invitation to them to send someone to our meetings? I mean, work with us in what respect? We're they want to. They want to have input into the plan as it will. Process. And, and, and how it affects the school district and how the school okay. district will contribute. I think that's a really good idea. It would be great to have someone take yeah. at least one meeting to come and have a dialogue. And if you, if you look at our, our meeting agendas, I think that we're actually in a pretty great space for that right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so stepping back a little from this particular building's focus, um, that is something that we've sort of danced around, this idea of having kind of sector community support. So having meetings on some regular basis with farmers and with um, you know, landlords and with uh, what else are we going to do? As Everyone part of that. our outreach, but for just like well, sub generally. subgroups that that can work on these pieces with us. What would be so it was suggested to me to go to potentially go to the ag commission meeting earlier this week? Oh, it was supposed to be yesterday, and it got. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that look like? Being an agriculture? Yeah. yeah. Can, can someone from this group go to, go to the public and during, I assume at the beginning of their meeting, they do a similar thing, public's here, and can I stand up and say, hey, I'm part of the Energy and Climate Action Committee, and just sort of extending a, an informal uh, introduction that we're out here, this is what we're doing, we think you guys play a critical role and be very positive with climate and farms. Like, can, I, can I represent this group in that way? So what right. are you going to say? Well, I don't know. Most, <laughs> mostly <laughs> listen. More rambly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just to get awareness that we exist. Right. Uh, so we, so, so, like, it's public comment, so it's, we can't take a lot of time. So, so um, I'm the staff liaison to the ACOM. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can put you on the agenda. <laughs> Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you I, could be, you could, I mean, I, I would think for something like that, you don't want to just show up as public comment. Okay. I would suggest you get on the agenda and, you know, just sort of talk about, if you want to just talk about this committee and sort of the work we're doing. And, and so is that, yeah. and is that something that then needs to get pre vetted by this committee, what would be said? Not if you're just, you know, in, informing them of what our, you know, char charge is what our goals are, what we're in the process of doing. What, I, I don't the, see the why. The committee would probably um, um, approve or whatever it is that you do that, but not like, um, and then maybe we do it to some other committees as well. Yeah. But not, I mean, I'm not inclined to sort of um, okay the verbiage that thou shalt speak. Yes. It is my sense that all committee members are well equipped to. <laughs> and if you feel it's like they're only, they only meet once a month. If you feel like going off, uh, you know, on some personal <laughs> yeah, ideas, just say then so. you have to say, well, "I'm going to put my my resident hat on now," and yeah. you know, this I'm not speaking on behalf of the committee, but when I'm saying this, but blah blah blah, whatever. What <laughs> other? I mean, this is something else we've talked about. What other town committees and? Entities do work. So I was in front of the historic commission the other day, and they started talking to me about these issues. Uh, um, 
historic houses. They are excited to kind of be the kind of local historic district commission that is approving things that make history, as it were, I think. Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not mm -hmm. But they had a very positive, they're not just keep it the way it was. They, they're, in fact, they've written it to their regs as something on solar panels. Maybe you got that in there. It's great. I do. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. there's two committees. Are, do we want to get into this? Well, let's just kind of brainstorm the other committees that the exist committee. that we should. Yeah, the committees of the council that would be relevant are the Community Resources Committee that is working on the master plan and this update to the zoning bylaw. And there's going to be a new committee that's about to be created that's a city services committee. So those two. There's the JCPC, which is the Joint Capital Planning Committee, which will definitely have, you know, that's the, this uh, resident capital request will go before the JCPC. And as far as like citizens committees, um, like the TAC, Transportation Advisory Committee, Planning Board, the AGCOM, um, CONCOM. CONCOM, right, Con Conservation Commission, um, and, you know, like everything arguably is related to what we're doing, but, th but they are the big ones. Um, mm. And the Historical Commission. ZBA. Right, the ZBA. The ZBA Design Review Board and the Planning Board are all kind of like well, D together. The DRB is advisory, but the ZBA has actually got a regulatory function. Right, so ZBA, Biggie. Yeah. They have pretty structured meetings. Yeah. They do, but you can, but there's still, I mean, there's time for public comment, and it's not that they don't have some, at times, informal. But are they in a position to be advocating for policies, or are they that they're just implementing I, I, rules and regulations? I think you have to all decide what your goal of doing these, this outreach is. So it's, you know, what's, are you just educating or are you trying to advocate? I mean, I think honestly, it doesn't make sense to go and advocate for them. I think how that works is you all create something that you then recommend to them. That's typically how that works. I You're think it, not we go and listen mostly okay. to, to get a sense of, you know, what are they doing and, and how are they thinking and, um, and just let them know by our presence and the few th words we say that that we're going to be doing a climate action plan and it will cover everything in town. We want to work with them. And you want their feedback on things. I mean, you want to, you know, it's like if you have something, even if you're working on something, you want to don't go to them with a finished product. You want to go with them with something that's in development and say, you know, we'd like your input and feedback on what we're working on too. Right. I think part I was just going to say an, an invitation if they are working on something that they think they could, they could bounce off of us uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with, with regard to sustainability or, or greenhouse gas impacts, then we welcome that opportunity. Yeah, I think part of the problem is that nobody except one person knows what we're doing. <laughs> agenda of every planning board meeting to at least the town council. I don't know who she, else she sends it to. But that's really helpful because mm. otherwise, I don't know when the planning board meetings are. I don't know what's on their agenda. But I think that like, if, if we sent our agenda or our agenda and our minutes out to all those groups, they would know what we're doing. You know? Like originally, we had wanted to have uh, staff from all those different departments on this committee, like they mm -hmm. have in Northampton. Mm -hmm. But we were told, well, you know, they didn't want the money. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like Gilford Mooring, I'm sure he doesn't know what we're doing. Um, and, and it just seems like it would be helpful for staff and other committees 
to like you know what's on our agenda or I don't know how much that would tell them to see our agenda but it's pretty general but at least it would t but I'd like to say to you we get in front of them even just for five minutes and we just I think part of what's going on is if we are in a town that for, is, we're in a world that is a lot of business as usual and if it's uncommon to have a guy or a gal from a committee show up at a meeting and say hey we're disrupting this a little. We want yeah. to do it in a positive way. Um, we're going to be reaching out more and more as time goes on. We're here. We're but are we? Climbing. I don't know. I mean, something like that. Or, or do you know about our goals? This is what they are. Do you know what it means? How can we support you understand this and incorporate it? Mm. In yeah, years? I mean, what we could do, there you is, go. which yeah. is what the town council is doing, is you know, assign one of us to be a liaison to the different committees so that occasionally we would go or we'd get their minutes and we'd know. Uh, technically, the, the, these, the goals are now their goals as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is the town's goals. They've been adopted. So, yeah, uh, I know that's, the, that's, that's a, a, just a, an of, intro. And that's part of, I mean, as much as there's frustration around having a climate action plan, this is also another reason why you have it too, is that it's also, uh, in this process, I mean, you're talking about going to their meetings, but it's also inviting them to get engaged in the discussion. Exactly. As, like the way we did with right. the stakeholder group, there were, there were, there was representation from a lot of different departments and DPW was represented. So was fire. Oh, so at the MVP. At the MVP yeah. planning. So like we're basically think about yeah. This next phase mm -hmm. as more of that mm. engagement, and bringing people together, because you know it's also mm. getting them in, getting them actively involved. People came out of that meeting really excited. Do, do we want to have another internal, you know, municipal connection kind of? Yeah, when we start, when we have our consultants and we're doing this, because that's part of the process. One of our sixteen uh, meetings, right? One of our that's one of our sixteen <laughs> meetings. Yes. And maybe we could, and here's a question: like, as part of this, it's like. Should there be a climate action plan? Like, if there's a master plan, like, should the consultant be just put laying all this into our master plan? Like, Thank you. Why is that, there another plan? That, the master plan. <laughs> that's another discussion. Yeah, and I was actually realized yeah. that I meant to say something about that, and I oh, didn't. I yeah. lost my and and we're getting sorry. to, you know, time, and sorry. we sorry, need to ask for unforeseen items, which we kind of were just talking about. I wanted to. Did everyone get a chance to look at the uh, that link? Mass energies. Um, it's um, a link to to mass energize, which is is a tool, an outreach tool that's being being beta tested in Concord and Wayland, um, and it's just uh, and 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 here, Energy Save is rolling it out in, in April in like Hadley. Um, not Springfield, P Pittsfield, um, several other places. In Amherst? No. Um, <laughs> you would know that. <laughs> no, <why>? Here. <laughs> so um, uh, it it is exciting in that it's a means by which the community can be involved, and you know, like I said, there's a goal of getting. Um, in this one, 50% of the community to sign up to be participating in the different actions. And so there are different things that you can do, like participate in compost, it, it pickup, etc. Right. I don't know what's going on. Um, it doesn't oh, copy come up. This, the URL and paste it. Click. You have to hold down click. I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, five five, yeah. five yeah. communities. Yeah. Actually, we're going to talk about that tonight at our, yeah. our meeting. Um, so, and one of them is green heating and AC. So people can, can, you know, sign up as having done that or buying and leasing an electric car. And, and you can have the data going in um, linked to your community so that we get the data. So that we right. know um, what the commitments are and what the... I like how joining Metro West 350 you know, is an, an action that you take on this. <laughs> so, yeah, that includes Concord and Wayland both. Um, but, uh, yeah, and so I'm assuming that, that emissions of reductions
can be connected to this too. It, it is. Yeah, it, 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 it is already. Well, well, the calculation's right. already in the the oh. system. So, so this um, it would be interesting to see like how much we think that could be that how many emissions can be reduced by 2025 by doing this, you know. Right. Well, and then you have the follow-up, which is all the work. The follow-up meaning? Did you do what you said you would do? Oh, these are not people that have done it? They're no. These are all pledges. Oh, okay. All right. But I'm sure it's also people who have already done it, right? Well, it's well, an ad to do. You can, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can make buttons. it that way. You can customize it for right. your community. Once they really get it down, which they don't quite. So, um, yeah, this is this is the best tool I've seen to do stuff like this. I'm sure that there are problems with it, but um, well, it's not it just ready. Seems, it seems like it's you know um, short of going door to door to every person's house in Amherst. You know, this is a way that we could draw people in. Um, and not, not for the outreach for the MVP thing, but just ongoing, you know. Mm -hmm. This would, could be part of our actual climate action plan that we're gonna be doing this. Who did they do this through? Do it, um, it, it started in Concord. It was a bunch of Concord greenies, you know, mothers up front and some others. And they had this big event that created cooler <laughs> Concord and Energy Saved helped like broaden it to. We did it in Agawam last year, and um, they they were just really big on the integrating systems, and so it grew out of that event they did, and then the, the um, programmer just kept going. So did they purchase? So did Wayland purchase this program? It's free. So far, it's just free. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with people because I thought it was so cool. So <laughs> yeah, um, I I should have remember, I've been, I remember know, I've to been invite you all to going door to door to every house in Amherst, but this saved a lot. Hadley's going to be doing <laughs> this. So yeah, that's great. We should all I go have to. Like they have a, uh, there's a person you can contact. You're a volunteer community coach for knowledgeable assistance mm -hmm. in this important decision. So that, that's kind of a nice factor. Yeah. It's not a contractor that you might have to be a little bit nervous about. It's a, a fellow homeowner or property owner. Newton so just a hired a full time energy coach. Awesome. Who did? Newton. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you need that. It, it's hand holding work. Yeah, yep. I mean, yeah. It, it's like um, social workers. Mm -hmm. Like case managers. We need case managers. Yes. Really? I know. I need one. I need one too. I, need that. I, need yep. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, I, I, I love that they yeah. have this, this provider, Black Earth Compost, that, um, you know, it's, it's voluntary. But they, they're, they're working with this one group that, that composts, that does residential pickup and, and uses the compost locally. So we should and they wrap do, this they up. And they developed a local business yeah. around this. <laughs> it's very cool. Can I, can I just say something really quick about the master plan update? Mm -hmm. So just so folks know, the, and I'm sure Darcy is aware of this, but um, the planning department is um, in charge of updating the master plan. They're only bringing it up to more current information. They're not redoing the whole master plan. That is going to be happening in like in like another five years. Then they're going to be completely redoing the master plan. So in terms of the work that we're doing right now, what I suggested might be useful is that there's a way that um, – when we have our climate action plans, specific things link to the climate action plan so that there's some crossover between the two documents. Um, so it's not like it just references the climate action plan like it did 
in the past. Mm -hmm. It actually has like links to it because everything's you know electronic these days. So there might be like specific things that are maybe recommended that would link to um, our plan as well, so that there'll be some you know communication between those documents, and that would be the easiest way to get that kind of. Um, incorporation of this effort into what's happening with that right now. Okay. So, so the, and that is, I mean, they're, they are trying not to update it too extensively, but one area in which they, they're, you know, they're updating it to the extent that we have new policy or new plans that have come online in the last few years. And they, they such have, as? Such as climate <laughs> action. Right. Um, so, yeah. But, so. But can, The it's next part of it. Master. It's incorporated into it. It's like the so the master plan identifies the pathways of like so part of what we're doing, the things, the work that this group is doing and the group that the goals of the climate action plan will be incorporated into that, but it's not necessarily there's two standalone documents. They're gonna be kind of folded in together. It wouldn't they it would be a lot, I mean it's it's a huge, huge process. And for them to do the level of detail that we're trying to dive into with our work, we want to fold that into what's going to be done for, this, for the master plan. We don't want to have them be two separate standalone documents, and we don't want this to just suddenly become that, because we'll lose a lot. There's just not enough bandwidth. The Northampton Climate Action Plan has as a subtitle an element of the town's master plan. <laughs> that makes it easy. <laughs> uh, but it makes sense to do both. So, yeah. Um, yeah. quickly, uh, items for next meeting. Um, possibly school committee rep coming and having a, a conversation specifically about the role of the school committee and, you know, it's got it's cross sector, but that could be our sector, you know, time next meeting to talk about specifically that whole, you know, Probably school. Leads to buildings and vehicles and everything. Solar, electricity, yeah. blah, blah, blah. acquisition. <clears throat> Food acquisition. Um, so okay. that's something. Public schools Do people eat more food than any other group in the country. And We're probably thinking, waste thinking more food. Waste. <laughs> waste and the embodied carbon of food is huge. Oh, right. Sorry. MVP update just on the revised scope. Do you want me to? Yeah. Um, well, it, it will have gone out already, I hope. Yeah, so right. I'll just send, yeah, but I'll, yeah. you know. Put that in your packet at least. Yeah. Um, do, do you like that idea of taking a, a, a break and going on to another sector and inviting school committee rep in, in that place in the agenda? Instead of doing a sector? Yeah, because I think we would want to spend a good half hour on it. On the school related stuff? Yeah, I think so and talk about how to move together. But, but do we want to just, um, are, is this a special invitation for one meeting, or are we inviting them to regularly come to our meetings? I think that's a conversation to have. Maybe it's not next time. Maybe we can talk about it. I think it was a one time, initially at least, a one shot, invite them, have a conversation, open conversation, and then consider the next steps after that. Okay. So we're not ready for the invite to act or at. Or it's probably worth making it or talking with Laura and scheduling that because that could be two, three meetings yeah. out. And could I suggest that this work that you're doing on, you know, all this sector work and discussions that you're having are really things that will be useful for the consultants. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. you probably want to keep that going I, as much as you can. Yeah, I okay. agree with that. that, that okay. This is time. I think it's, it's time generating lots of ideas and we need the action. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. It's more of meeting with these folks once we have the consultant yeah, on board. Yeah, when meeting you have the consultant, that consultant. makes Yeah, again, we all part of the community meetings. engagement. 16 yeah. meetings. Yeah. <coughs> okay. We'll, we'll let Laura and Carrie talk and decide if she wants to just come and listen, you know, and, and not have a section of the meeting. Of course. We want it. Um, okay. Um, and we won't have anything about the budget that's going to go. There's probably things on the bike rack. Uh, I'm happy to um, just Your present yeah. my solar Dog graph and, pony. and maybe um, I did a little analysis on sort of solar and mass in Amherst. Um, I think it's actually good we didn't talk about it today because I, I want to add a little bit to that in terms of how it compares with maybe some other towns. As yes. Well as the state. Oh, yes, yes, sorry. Um, I forgot. See, we, I was looking at that. Yeah. Would it be difficult to add in a show in the context of the total actual consumption? And then, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, like, are we, is it this much or is it this much? Exactly. Like this much? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I can translate that to how many megawatt hours that produces. I'll have to go through yeah, my notes. There are probably a couple other things. Yeah. Is, is there anything else citizens. for the yeah. agenda? Jumped out. Uh, we, we had talked about inviting the, the uh, contractor for Rolling Green. Uh, Doubt that's going to happen so fast. Well, uh, but that's the future. Again, that, again that, I mean, I wonder too about that's like, again, the community engagement piece where if we actually go to Rolling Green and have one of the sessions, like, sure, yeah. the, yeah, I mean, that's more the, I mean, that's kind of the. Sure, yeah. I just want to make sure they didn't get lost. But yeah, I, I just want those lines, um, as long as you get the okay. And if Laura, I'd be happy to draft a letter for Laura to send. Not that it's that major of an undertaking, but. Oh, yeah. how, how about more about our own visiting? You know, so far, we've just sent Jesse off to the Ag and Historic. Yeah, 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 yeah. See if he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> See if he comes in next week. <laughs>